In this video, we're going to look at creating send and return effects in Pro Tools. Understanding how to use send and return effects is essential for getting the most out of your Pro Tools system. Send and return effects are generally used for time-based effects like reverb and delay. Because these can be some of the most processor-intensive effects that you'll use, setting them up in a send and return configuration will help to maximize the number of tracks and plugins that you can run in your session. You can see here I have a basic Pro Tools session with a single track. Before we get started, you'll want to make sure that you can see both inserts and sends view on the track. I can display these either by going to the View menu, Mix Window Views, and choosing Inserts A through E, and Sends A through E. Or I can click on the Mix Window View selector at the bottom left of the Mix Window, and enable the views there. Now I'm ready to set up my send. I'll go ahead and start with Send A on the track, and I'll assign it to an available bus. In this case, we'll use bus 1 and 2. And now I'll need to create an aux input track as a destination for the bus. You can do this by going to the track menu and choosing New, or by pressing Command Shift N on the Mac or Control Shift N on Windows. And here I'll create one new stereo aux input. And I'm planning to put a reverb on here, so I'll go ahead and rename it Reverb. Now I'm ready to set bus 1 and 2 as the input assignment for the aux. Then the last step is to choose the reverb plugin that you want to use. In this case, I'll go to multi-channel plugins, reverb, and choose Dverb, which is free with all Pro Tools systems. And the Dverb plugin window will open. If I hit play now, you'll still be hearing the dry, non-reverberated signal. You've got a tango inside the building. So to hear the reverb, I'll need to turn up the send level. You've got a tango inside the building. And that's how you set up a basic send and return effect. But there's actually a much easier way to do this if you're working with Pro Tools 9 or later. Let's go ahead and use the faster method to set up a send to a delay. I'll go ahead and go to send B, but instead of choosing an output or a bus, I'll choose new track. This will open up the new track dialog. And here I'll set the settings for a stereo aux input, and we'll go ahead and name it delay. And when I click Create, you'll see that Pro Tools has done most of the work for me. It created a new aux input track named Delay, then it created a new bus named Delay, and assigned it both to the send and as the input source for the aux input. Now all I have to do is choose a Delay plugin, like Air Dynamic Delay, and turn up the level on the send. You've got a tango inside the building. The building. The building. The building. The building. As you can see, this is a much faster way to create send and return effects. One last thing we should look at are the different send views inside Pro Tools. The standard send view you're probably already familiar with is actually called assignments view. And this allows you to see the assignment of all five sends for that view. But we also have something called single send view. If I command click on Mac or control click on Windows on the small arrow on the left side of the send, I can switch to single send view, which gives me a miniature channel strip that shows me the send level, the send metering, pan, mute, pre- and post-fade settings, and a send level indicator. If I want to get back to assignments view or change to a different single send view, I just command or control click again on the send letter, and I can choose the desired view from the pop-up menu. So we could go and look at our delay send in a single send view, or we could go back to the assignments view to see an overview of all the send assignments that we've created. So that's a basic look at how we create send and return effects in Pro Tools.